This is a sea cucumber. Despite looking like that, it has recently become one of the most expensive commodities in the world. Why? My name is Ella, and I'm a junior at Brown University. They really look like someone missed the toilet bowl, but they are, in fact, animals. Sea cucumbers are echinoderms, like starfish and sea urchins, in the genus Holothuroidea, which is Greek for weird, fat, squishy worm thing. One of the synapomorphies of echinoderms is that they have pentaradial symmetry. So take a starfish, fold it up on itself, that's a sea urchin. Now turn the sea urchin on its side and stretch it out, that's a sea cucumber. They're actually really important members of their ecosystems. Their primary job is to keep things clean and neat because they eat the detritus that falls to the ground from the water column. But they don't really have hard shells and they're not super fast. How are they alive? How do they protect themselves from predators? They're pretty good at camouflaging as a disgustingly wrinkly lump, but in the case that any of the sea cucumber's actual predators are feeling particularly brave, sea cucumbers can expel this spaghetti-looking stuff called cuvarian tubules out their back ends when threatened. Some varieties are toxic, so wise predators will usually spit them out. In the case that a predator is still undeterred, they can actually just expel their internal organs as a last resort. Ain't no big thing for the sea cucumber, they'll just throw the organs back later. For, okay, yeah, so, um, they have been, and continue to be, a delicacy in China, where a long, long time ago, they decided to look past appearances and take advantage of some easily sourced protein. Again, it's not like sea cucumbers can run away particularly fast. So they've been harvested with relative ease for centuries, and dried and salted sea cucumbers have become a traditional delicacy. So if people have been eating them for centuries, then why did their value just skyrocket like a few decades ago? Great question, I'm so glad you asked. Okay, so China used to be very closed off to international trade, and then for various reasons, in 1979, they pulled a total 180 and changed their foreign trade policy to be like wide open. Suddenly, the whole world could sell things to China, and China could sell things back. It totally stimulated the global economy, and China got really wealthy really fast. Where sea cucumbers were originally only available to the aristocratic elite, the newly rich middle class could afford these delicacies, and far more people began demanding sea cucumbers for their new low price. So even though the relative price of sea cucumbers went down initially, so many more people wanted them that their value skyrocketed. This was actually a really good thing for small island countries who just had a bunch of sea cucumbers lying around. All of a sudden they were like, holy sh**, we can make bank off of these! So they all started focusing on exporting sea cucumbers. And they made a ton of money and everyone in China got their sea cucumbers and everything turned out great. I'm so kidding, this went wrong in so many ways. When the news broke that sea cucumbers were super valuable, small island governments told their people to invest everything in removing, processing, and exporting sea cucumbers, but they laid basically no restrictions down. Those people got on that so fast that they kind of removed all of their sea cucumbers. Then there weren't enough left over to repopulate themselves, and so the next season there were none to harvest. So then, there were a lot of sea cucumber farmers who could make no money, because within only a few years, there were no sea cucumbers. In economics, this is called a boom and bust pattern, and as the 80s progressed, it sort of radiated outward from the epicenter of China, and all the while, continuing to crank up the inherent value of the sea cucumber. The sea cucumber industry got so lucrative so fast, it reached the other side of the world in as little time as 1991. So that's not great if you're these people trying to make a living, but also this is not great for those aforementioned ecosystems which the sea cucumbers typically keep clean. Especially in coral reefs, where all the animals and plants are super sensitive, any sort of environmental disruption is kind of really bad. In the Galapagos, for instance, sea cucumbers have been found to really enjoy this one kind of cyanobacteria that lives on all the surfaces. Usually, sea cucumbers keep this bacterial growth at bay. But then, in 1991, the Galapagos started shipping out all of their sea cucumbers, to the point where the only industry larger than sea cucumber fishing 
is tourism. Wow. Without the sea cucumbers to wrangle them, the cyanobacteria kind of just went ham and made it way harder for other things to live. So, sea cucumbers are dangerously valuable and it's hurting both people and ecosystems. What can we do? Well, no, not really. Even if countries could enforce such harsh restrictions on each other just like that, imagine if a group of Chinese conservation biologists came over here and were like, hey, so we did some research on uh, Dippin' Dots, and it turns out they're an endangered species and you all can't eat them ever again. Sorry, America. No way we'd be cool with that. We've been eating Dippin' Dots since the dawn of our glorious nation. With which other cold dessert will we satiate our taste buds in our elementary school cafeterias? At what other refreshment stand will we spend our money at Six Flags? With which other nebulously dairy-based tiny ice cream spheres will we feed our bald eagles? Even if you don't like Dippin' Dots, you'd be concerned that a foreign country is making rules in our country about a delicacy that they don't eat. Imagine for a moment your dad reading that headline. Chinese dads would probably react similarly. Also, no. Even if that didn't raise ethical questions, we don't really have enough solid data about how sea cucumbers are affected by harvesting to confidently make choices about restrictions. Plus, the massive stream of income that China is providing for these small tropical nations now is a really good thing. We don't want that to stop. The solution is not to decrease demand, but to increase supply. Yeah, uh-huh. Okay, how do we do that? Instead of harvesting sea cucumbers from the wild, we can start farming them. Humans have used aquaculture for a long time, and it's a good way to keep producing livestock without taking it from wild populations. But if you want to become a good sea cucumber rancher, you have to know a lot of things so that you don't lose all your money. And the thing is, since sea cucumber farming is pretty new in a lot of places, nobody really knows the perfect way to not lose all of your money. Mostly what we've learned through practice is that there are a lot of ways that sea cucumber aquaculture can go wrong. So while aquaculture is a better choice than harvesting sea cucumbers from the wild, it's easier said than done. We need to do so much more research on sea cucumbers before we can get rid of all of these risks. But there's a large disconnect of communication between conservationists, sea cucumber farmers, and their governments. If we can provide some research to the people and governments who are doing the work, and include everyone in these conversations, then farmers can be far more successful, make sea cucumbers less expensive for everybody, and leave the wild populations of sea cucumbers alone to recover. If you're interested in helping with the process, here's a list of resources that can tell you more. I'll put it all down below. Marine conservation isn't about fixing and controlling. It's about learning and adapting. There are a lot of people who fish to make money in the world. And as the most powerful stakeholders of the seas, their voices and experiences are valuable. As scientists, we need their help if we all want to protect both the longevity of our global economy and the longevity of our ecosystems. Those two things are intimately tied and they will only find success together. If we can do this, sea cucumbers can be sustainably and profitably provided to the people who have traditionally eaten them for centuries past, and they'll still be able to do their weird, lumpy thing for centuries to come. My name is Ella, and thank you for watching.